Have you ever been offered something, but because of indecisiveness, you miss this great opportunity? Could it be that some people are luckier than others? How many chances of success does a human being have? How many opportunities of repentance will God give? Do you know when the last day of your life will be? Stay with us to find the answer of this question in the topic, the opportunity of a lifetime. It is a pleasure for me, Pastor Pablo Hanger from Washington, D.C. in the United States to share this topic today, the opportunity of a lifetime. There have been great opportunities and even sometimes where it's in danger and you don't take the right chance, the right moment, you lose the opportunity to save your life. There's an interesting story that happened with the Billy Graham in his autobiography, just as I am, he writes that when John Kennedy, after, just short after his election, uh, one day they were both together in, with the president elected, and they stopped it by the car, and the president, John Kennedy, turned and asked uh, Billy Graham, do you believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ? And I most certainly do, says Billy Graham. Well, does my church believe it as uh, John Kennedy? They have it in the creeds, answer Billy Graham. Uh, they don't teach it, he say. They don't tell us much about it. I'd like to know more about this. And then Billy Graham explained the wonderful promises of the second coming of Jesus and the promise of new heaven on new earth. And they talk for some times and uh, at the end, uh, John Kennedy said, very interesting. Then he mentioned also, we'll have to talk more about this someday. And then the opportunity passed. Some years later, in 1963, it was the national prayer uh, breakfast. And uh, Billy Graham was with flu, but he needed to give a speech as well as uh, Kennedy. And when they finished, and they were all both going out of the hotel, going to the cars, uh, the president stopped and looked to Billy and said, Billy, could you ride back to the White House with me? I'd like to see you for a minute. And Mr. President said, Billy, I've got a fever and uh, I don't feel well. Could we wait and talk some other time? Of course, say the president but this other time never came. And Billy thought many times what was in the time of president, in the mind of the president, because short after that occasion, John Kennedy was shot. There are opportunities that if we let pass in life, they never come back. It is too late. I remember a young man dealing with another experience that he had a terrible fight with wars with his father and he decided to leave his home. Pride uh, was his big problem. He took his things, he packed his bag and he left home and he didn't mention where he went. One year passed, two years passed, five years passed, 10 years passed and some relative managed to get in contact with him and told him, you know what? Your father just died. This young man, he wanted to go back home. He loved his father and he wanted to embrace his father and tell sorry to his father, but he was also pride and he was fighting inside in himself. And he never did it. He went to the funeral, he cried, he shouted, forgive me dad, but it was too late. His father could not forgive him anymore. He was too late. Dear friend that you are hearing me, you know that young man, he carried this burden on these thoughts, he this guilt conscience every day for the future of his life. And he never find rest for his souls. 
because of a proud heart. How many times we also struggle because of thoughts, because of some decisions that we delayed and later on we lose the opportunity. Or somebody, maybe a businessman, offer you a chance and you think, no, I'm doing fine right now. It's not the opportunity right now. And you delay it and later on you see how this business is developing and you lose the opportunity to have a, a stable job, a good job. But sometimes people ask, why are some people luckier than others? Does God bless certain people more than others? I want just to get some ex one example. Steve Jobs, the ones that created the Apple system, Apple computer, the cell phone. He started very simple. Even he had difficulties in, he, with his school. They, he, was, he couldn't finish his school. And he started just in his garage creating things. But it was not that just suddenly came the computer. When he was 13 years of age, he went to work hard and even with very low salary. But when he died in 2011, he was said to be worth of 10.2 billion. It was over time, but it was also the result of a hard and perseverant work. You know, it is not the slack. It is, you know, the result of a hard work. But in other sides, taking the same man, Steve Jobs, he was a millionaire. He had so much money, but he could not even use this money to save his life. He did not die because he was old. He died because he got a cancer in the pancreas. Then he lost his life. The millions could not pay his recovery. There are some opportunities in life, and you need to be very careful of this because there are opportunities that come, but they, if we miss the opportunity, the chance, they go, and sometimes they don't come back. And sometimes there are values that we don't consider they are so important, we think for the future. When we think about the future world, I want to tell you today, there's a wonderful, really wonderful, marvelous future world waiting for those that love the Lord. But for those that take advantage of today's opportunity. In 1 Corinthians, in the Word of God, the wonderful book, the Word of God, the books of books, it says there in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 9, but this is written, I had not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. <laughs> There's something so specially prepared in heaven for us that not even the imagination can conceive. But not everybody will reach this. The book of Revelation, chapter 21, the last book of the Bible, just few pages to the end, chapter 21, Verse number one until five, it explains this beautiful home. And I want to read it for you. Chapter 21, verse number one until five. And it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I hear a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, no crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I made all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. My dear friends, the promise of the word of God are real. And God promised this wonderful home that there will be no pain. A wonderful promise, a world without suffering, a world without pain, a world without tears, a world without worries. A world without separation, a world without death. This is ideal home that God always wishes for His creation. 
And this is the home that is waiting in this future world. But again, is this for everyone? God does not want that anyone get lost. And this is very important. You know, God is not unjust. He wished that everyone get saved. But it's not the result of lack. And it's not that God just take, okay, this will be saved, this is lost. No. Second Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, what is the issue? Is how do we take this invitation of God the same as in the invitation of business, the same as this invitation to reconcile that is the opportunity to reconcile that this young boy had because he left home because he was angry. And sometimes humans also get confused. And they start, start thinking, I don't need this. But the year passed, we realize, no, I cannot go alone. I really need the help of God. It's very interesting the story of the people of Israel. The Word of God, the book of Psalm, the wonderful songs of Psalm, it shared this story. In the Psalm chapter 95, verse number 6 to 11, I'd like to read it for you. It says, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord or Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture and the sheep of His hands. Today, if ye hear His voice, harden not your heart, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, provoked, proved me, and saw my work. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, and they have not known my ways, and to whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Oh, terrible! God was promising when they were having the opportunity to receive the promised land. When they already left Egypt, they already were on the way to this promised land. They saw, put attention, they saw and they experienced wonderful miracles because they del took them out of Egypt with miracles. God was guiding them with the cloud of fire during the night. God was guiding them with the clouds of shade during the day. God opened the sea. God did miracle after miracles. But why do the people cry? The people got tired. And sometimes, you know, we forget our experiences. We forget from where we're coming from. We forget all the blessings that God had given us. And we do like the people of Israel. We start complaining. But the Lord told very clear that today, if you hear my, His voice, Harden not your heart as in the provocation and as in the days of the temptation in the wilderness. Do not provoke God. Do not tempt God. It is opportunity of your life. There is a wonderful future. The future world is marvelous for the people of God. Precious future, precious new Jerusalem, the real home. We have an almighty God. Don't lose your hope. Take this promise is this beautiful promise in your heart, in your hands, and believe on them. Exodus chapter 17, explain what happened there in the wilderness, in the desert. In verse number 3 and in verse number 7, it says, And the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and says, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us? and our children and our cattle with thirst. And he called the name of that place Massa and Meribah, because of the child of the children of Israel, or the uh, cheating of the children of Israel, and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? They were asking themselves, Is really the Lord among us? And sometimes similar questions come to life. Why that happened to me? You see, I'm doing good, and you know, things is not going well. We make God guilty of the problems. I want to tell you very clear, God is not guilty of the suffering of the human being. God wants to save us. Don't get tired. That was the problem of the people. Perfect, 
moments of doubt also come into our life, but God is giving us another opportunity today not to lose our salvation. And it's very important. Take yourselves from the Lord. In the New Testament, in the book of Hebrew, I want to read in the book of Hebrew, chapter 3. I'm going to read a few texts there. In Hebrew chapter 3, the word of the Lord there mentioned in verse number 7 and 8, the following. It says, Wherefore, as the Holy says, God says, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. And also from verse number 12 to 15, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardening through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is says today, if ye hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the provocation. It is referring to the same experience. And it's explaining here why it happened, why these problems come. Because they are deceived by the sin. When this happened today, you know, we look to that and we say, why I cannot do this? Why I cannot have fun on this? And we are, we know that this is really a, a sin. We know that this having dangers, but we are trying to say it's not so bad. We are trying to be divided between the sins of God and the sins of this world. When I want to tell you, today is a time, the opportunity of God to take a decision. Because if we don't stay fast, as it was mentioned there in the text, in the confidence, steadfast unto the end, what happened? We lose the opportunity. That's why if you hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation. Don't provoke God. How long will this opportunity be? How many seconds, chances do we have in life? But, you know, we don't really know how many chances do we have. But something we know, that before Jesus come, before Jesus come, it will finish the time of grace or will finish the time of repentance. The book of Revelation, in the last chapter also, Revelation chapter 22, just in the last page of the Bible, Revelation chapter 22, verse number 11, it says, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. It will come the moment that there is no more time to change. If you, had, if you have been unjust or doing crooked things, half things, there is no more time to change. But if you have decided for the Lord, if you have walked with the Lord, if you have been taking decision to separate from sin, you will remain in the sight of God. The grace finished, the time to repent is, is finished. And then which side do you, are you there? Are you? In the book of Amos, in the chapter 8, verse number 12, very similar says, And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek for the word of the Lord and shall not find it. It is finished. It, the opportunity is gone. That's why, my dear friend, today is the opportunity for the Lord. Many say, I'm still young. I still have time to, to decide for Jesus. Let me enjoy the little bit life. But this is very dangerous. I have another question. One is very important question. When will be the last day of your life? When will be the last day of, that the Lord will give you in this earth? Do you know when will be your last days? How many opportunities will God give you? God saved me from the dead in several occasions. And I want to share with you two occasions. One of them, I was young and I was enthusiastic with a car. And I was driving a car coming down from a mountain for a field trip when I realized the car has no brake. I pumped the brake 
with in the bottom, tried to put control the car, but they couldn't control the car. And I saw in front of me a car stop, and I was going to crash. But if I did, try not to crash this car, I see a big bus coming, and I was in a small car, and I saw the dead in front of me. I closed my eyes, and I drove the car with closed eyes. Until today, I don't know what happened that day. But I know that God lead the car that day when a miracle happened and I'm still alive. When I'm very thankful to the Lord. And just not long ago, a few months ago, many opportunities the Lord had saved me from that. But a few months ago, in the month of April, to be more specific, in this year 2020, I was with COVID-19, very sick. I had more than 10 days with fever increasing every day. I did a lot of treatment, but I couldn't control the sicknesses. The sickness, and, and I was getting weaker and weaker. I couldn't even talk more. I was so weak. I couldn't talk with my wife, with my children. And my wife told me, we need to go to the hospital. And I told her, wait. I trusted in the Lord that God could save me in this difficult moment. And I want to say for the glory and honor of the Lord, in that night, a miracle happened in my life. In the morning, I had no more fever, and God gave me a new opportunity. But how many opportunities will the Lord give us? How many opportunities will the Lord give you? You don't know if tomorrow you will be still alive. We don't know how long the Lord will give us opportunity. That's why I am talking to you, dear friends, you have a wonderful opportunity in life today that you must not miss. A marvelous heaven is waiting and prepared for those who believe and follow God. Will you take the chance to accept this promise of God? Or is also a second chance in the future world will be a moment of destruction. I recently saw a video that was a procession of trucks and military trucks in Italy carrying dead coffins going to burn them because there's no more place in the cemetery. And the person that was commenting the video, it was saying how many were there among those dead, rich people, maybe middle class, maybe poor people. How many of them had plans of a beautiful and long life for themselves? But suddenly, sickness come, and neither in the hospital could a relative come closer to them. There was no more time to farewell, to reconciliation with the family. That's why, dear friend, that you are hearing me, today is the time that you accept the Lord. Today is the time that you take a decision. The Bible says very clearly in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse number 36, but of the day and the hour knoweth no man, no not the angels of heaven, but my fathers only. He's talking about the day of Jesus coming. Neither the day of Jesus we know, neither the day, the day when are we going to, how long are we going to live. But today is the opportunity of grace. And we need to take that opportunity. My dear friend that is listening, today you are granted the great opportunity of a lifetime. Don't let a moment go by without being reconciled to God and to your fellow men. Don't wait any longer because it is so precious this time. Jesus is calling you. In Matthew chapter 11, verse number 28 and 29, beautiful text says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my joke upon you and learn on me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest upon your souls. Israel, those generations that went out of Egypt only to enter because they have no faith in the Lord and they did not find the rest. You have the chance to find the rest in the Lord today and the eternal rest, the heavenly rest, the heavenly promise, the heavenly Jerusalem, the book of Hebrew. Promise I'll talk about this future world, about this wonderful future world. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 speak about the great man of God. And in verse number 13 and 16 says one important thing. There it says, these all die in faith, not having received the promise. That it mean that God failed? No, 
But having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Verse 16, but now they desire a better country that is a heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he had prepared for them a city. My dear friends, God is faithful in his promise. This world is not our, our world. Even here in the United States, maybe you have more opportunities in business, but you see people suffering in the street. You see how the people die of COVID-19. Even there is technology here developing in science, in medicine. There is no safe place on this world. What we need to do is to accept the voice of God, to hear the voice of God and to accept the invitation and come closer to the Word of God. My dear friend, today is time for decision. Today is time to open our hearts to the Lord and to take the opportunity of your lifetime. Where do you want to spend eternity? With God or in the hell, in the destruction? I invite you, if you have done wrong things in your past, the Lord invites you to repent, to recognize your sins and to take a decision, a firm decision. Don't play with your life. Even if you believe that you are Christian, you need to be firm on the things of God. Otherwise, you will lose the great opportunity of your life. I'd like to pray for you at this moment. Bow your face and let's pray together. Lord, the Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your wonderful promise of new heaven and new earth. Oh, how wonderful home, Lord. I want to be there where there will be no more death, no more suffering, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears. Where we can enjoy this home that you had prepared for the beginning of human being. But because of this selfishness heart, they lost because of sin. Lord, thank you that you came to this world to show us that you love us. Thank you, Lord, that you want to guide us to this precious place. This world is not our home. Thank you, Lord, that you rescued me from death in several locations. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that you gave me. Lord, help my friends in this moment that they may also accept your invitation in their hearts and that they may surrender to you, Lord, and that we may receive these glorious promises soon because we see this future world is very soon. We don't want to lose our eternal life. Lord, forgive us and thank you for this promise. Lord, give us the rest and help us to be reconciled with our dear ones before it's too late. Lord, we ask all this and we praise you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you. And don't lose the, the topic of tomorrow in this series, The Future World. The Lord be with you.